Just for the back of the clock to enclose that, I've made an MDF panel which is 5mm small all the way around and the carcass of the clock and uh, these holes that have been cut in the rear here are for the switches and the 5 volt power supply and the USB port. This was just a mock-up to see how it's going to look and uh, I've gone ahead and cut another piece of MDF and I've put veneer on both sides of that now, that's English oak which is going to be the same veneer as the outside of the clock carcass and I did a single or two test cuts there just to check on the laser to make sure it was going to go right through because when you add the, the veneer it just you know, increases the thickness and it's just an extra interface for the, the laser beam to get through the laser energy so I'm happy with those settings although they're a bit slow so what I'll do now is cut out the actual back of the clock and I've added some ventilation holes at the top here I'm not really sure whether we need to do that the displays do get a little bit warm and so does the microcontroller so just having a little bit of um, uh, ventilation there might not hurt so let's go ahead get this in the laser and get that cut out oh and by the way I've flipped this so that uh, on one side you get a bit of um, charring uh, you know just from the smoke and the debris from the, the cutting process the other side is always much cleaner so if I flip this, uh, the, the good surface will be on the outside of the clock when we're done. I've disabled the door switch for your viewing pleasure. You're wondering what I'm doing, I'm just checking to make sure it has actually cut through. That piece is loose, so I'm pretty happy. So you can see on this side how clean uh, the veneer is cut. You don't get any of that scorching, and these pieces are all loose, so... Got lucky with the settings. Doesn't always happen. Alright, so that's our back done. Uh, that'll be held on with screws later on. I'll do some edge treatment on that where the MDF is exposed. But that's looking nice. Ventilation holes. What can go wrong? These veneered parts are more or less finished now and I'm getting a bit paranoid about getting them damaged or dirty. And I think I'm going to give these coat of an acrylic sanding sealer. Problem with this veneer is that if you get it oily or contaminated with something, it's so thin that you can't really sand back through the damage. So it's best to protect it now. That's really all it needs. It's just a very thin coat. I don't know if you can see that. There it is. Uh, those hollow areas where the digits are going to show through, they've um, buckled, and that's just a function of putting wet acrylic lacquer on that it's going to expand and because it's got nowhere to go it just buckles downwards I'm sort of hoping that's going to dry and stretch again but it's not going to be a glossy finish anyway so um, <laughs> well I'll just hope for the best you 
can really see how open the grain is on this oak, which is another reason why if I get any oil or grease on there, it's going to be a nightmare to get it out. Well, it is the next day. I thought I'd show you this. The veneer did come back to being flat. Uh, as the lacquer dries, it sort of shrinks the wood around it. So uh, that's worked out good. Oh man, screw that. I'm using a bandsaw. Well, I did use a bandsaw, but I forgot to turn the camera on. This is where having a, the laser mark the line for you is a really good idea because as you reach the line you'll see the burn or the kerf appearing in that edge and if you just stop after that burn mark disappears you know you got it right. So you can see there that kerf is around about a quarter of the way through the material. If I increase the settings to the maximum I wouldn't have got right through, I might have got through to about uh, three quarters. But you still got to you know, file it and sand it to finish anyway to get rid of that burn mark. <laughs> Uh, they're pretty much done. They'll need a fine sand later on. And just off camera, I just docked these corners off at 45 degrees so they follow the curvature at the front here and we'll need to just sand that round now. And I've planed the top down until it's flush with the top of the front panel. This is all preparation for the veneer. <laughs> so let's get on to these. I'm just having to be really careful here with this front panel. I've got a piece of scrap MDF on there just to protect it while it's in the vise. And I've got about, I don't know, like half a millimeter to come off there. Oh, I'm not gonna push my light. <laughs> I reckon that's pretty close. I'll do the rest with sanding block. Oh, that feels good. Okay, this is the veneer that we're going to be using for the outside of the clock case. And this is two consecutive layers of oak veneer. And if you're able to buy two consecutive layers, that is two leaves of veneer 
uh, taken in sequence out of a tree, what you end up with is uh, a mirror pattern if you open it up like a book. So this is called a book match when you're doing veneer work and with this oak you get these beautiful repeated patterns either side of the line of symmetry there with the medullary ray showing up like flame pattern. And when you get highly figured veneers and you do the book match it can look really impressive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the center line, the mirror line, right at the very top of the clock and then I'll work the veneer down both sides. So what I need to do here is to cut some strips out of this a little bit wider than the clock case itself and then carefully cut the joint line so that it butts together without any gaps. Now this material, this oak, is uh, a little bit difficult to cut. It tends to be a bit splitty um, and it doesn't like uh, cutting close to the ends of the sheet. It'll, it'll split off and break. So I've got to be a little bit careful with that, but that's why you trim it oversize. So I'm just going to put the clock case itself on that double stack of veneer there and mark out a line which is wider than what we need. And then with a sharp knife and a straight edge, we're just going to cut two slices. Now, if you just drag the knife straight through, it's almost certainly going to split off on this corner. So what you do is you start to cut. Don't aim to cut right through, just get a score mark going. And you can sort of tell that top leaf is cut through now. Just keep going with that. And when you get close to the end, you've got to turn the knife around and go back the other way. And that way you're not sort of pulling the edge of the veneer off. All right, top one's loose. Now, of course, these cuts that I've just done here don't need to be perfect, but what you don't want to do is to crack the edge of the veneer here, because that's our mirror line. So when this opens out, it's going to go like that. And I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little flaw just there. So we're going to have to cut through again, just on that mirror line, we're just removing a very small amount, and that's going to give us our book match pattern. So now we need to fold these two halves of veneer again and very, very carefully just trim through that mirror line. So you've got to just go very slowly with your knife. Don't put too much pressure on the knife, otherwise it will just simply act like a wedge and cut, or not cut, it'll split. So don't be in a hurry, just take your time. But you do need a good sharp knife to do this. Right. And then just fold it again and check it. Okay, if you press that down, it should be almost invisible. You can see it popping up there. Now, of course, that's not enough veneer to go right down the sides of the clock, so I'm going to have to add another piece at either end. So with your fingertips, you just got to feel that you've got that joint level. And sort of squish it together just a tiny bit and put some tape on that. Now, masking tape is not the best material to use here. You should be using a paper-based or a paper gum tape, uh, which is easy to get off afterwards. But I don't have any, so <laughs> we're going to make do with masking tape. So that's the center joint on the top of the clock. Now these pieces I cut previously and I've trimmed the ends and they can go like that. Now it's not a perfect book match but you see the grain repeats either side of that, uh, that cut line. That's how we want that. Well, that's more than enough veneer to do the top curve and the two sides. In fact, I'll trim this off a little bit before we try and fit that veneer. But I'm actually going to do the bottom first because um, it's easiest <laughs> and I want 
these sides to overlap the, the veneer edge of the base. So this uh, veneer is going to go on the base and what I've done here is I've marked the center line on the tape, I've marked the center line on the front of the clock just here so I can see it. That tape is just to uh, help prevent any glue seeping down over that already painted edge. Uh, and what we need to do now is get some glue on that and get it clamped up. So this is the cold press veneer glue. It seems to work pretty well. Best thing is the short drying time. It's only about 40 minutes and then you can take the clamps off. PVA takes a lot longer. Now it's really important you get the glue right out to the very edges, especially here. We do not want that veneer lifting up later on. Okay. Right, a couple of sheets of newspaper. Hey, the Aussie cricket is going well. You want some sandpaper, boys? I've got plenty. We can now get a couple of clamps on that, she's all good. So you can see a little bit of that glue seeped out over that tape, which is why I put it there in the first place. And you should just go around and inspect all these edges, make sure the glue is squeezing out. If there's a gap there, it's bad, you've got to get another clamp on it. But I can see glue squeezing out all the way around, so I think we're okay. Alright, well that's ready to trim now, and we'll give that a light sand and see how it looks. surprising how well this masking tape sticks when it's been pressed down by the, the clamping board. And you've got to be a little bit careful you don't pull up any of the grain. <clears throat> this is why the, the gummed paper tape is good, you can just wet it, it gets soft and you sort of rub it off basically. And it's lifted just a little bit of that grain there. All right. So this front edge, that's the one I've got to be most careful with. I'll leave the tape on there. Okay, so what I need to do is get the cut put in here for the feet to slide in. And that's going to be just a matter of using a straight edge and a, a knife just to get that piece trimmed out of there. Alright, I think I got it. I still have to decide whether I'm going to cover that with a veneer or not. Let's just have a look at it with the back on. Yeah, I think it's going to look neater with some veneer on that raw edge all the way around. But, we can get to that. Okay, the job today is to get this piece of veneer bonded to the, the top and the two sides of the clock. And it's sort of a difficult thing to do because you've got to be able to roll it around that curve and clamp it down at the same time. Now, trust me, I've had lots of experience doing this on my Lixi clock, and it's fair to say that I, I had lots of issues with that. And the method I'm going to use today might look a bit clumsy and silly, but trust me, there's, there's a reason why I'm doing it this way. So, even though I went to a lot of trouble to get this one piece of veneer fitted together and big enough to go right around the whole exposed surface of the, the carcass there, 
what I'm actually going to do is to cut it into three pieces and glue it uh, as three separate pieces. Um, I know it seems strange, but that's uh, you'll see why I do it that way. So I'm going to cut it just here and just here and then bond this flat piece on top. And then it's a lot less problem to be able to wrap it around the curve and clamp it to the end. So I'm going to cut through this now. And I'm doing it from the back. Um, once again, that's because we want the joint line to be nice and crisp on the outside and very sharp on the outside. So I've got a pencil mark there where I want to cut it. And just being careful we don't split it. And slice through that. And when it's joined up later on, you won't be able to tell that there's a cup there. So I'm going to turn that over and just mark that. So I can rejoin these pieces in the correct alignment later on. So I'm going to get this top piece glued down there, clamped, and then it's, like I say, a bit easier to get this uh, corner wrapped. I've got masking tape right around this front face now just to protect it and you can see the glue squeezing out there so I'm happy with that. Alright, let that dry and we'll come back to it. Alright, <laughs> didn't expect that. I'll have to clean that up. This one's not bad uh, and what we need to do now is just extend the veneer down the side. So this is our matching piece and we can tape that down and stretch this around and then I need to sort of trim this off uh, flush with the bottom of the clock so I can sort of wrap it tightly and clamp it. Now it's always problematic doing this sort of curvature with veneer. Uh, the problem being that when you wet it with the glue it wants to expand and it wants to expand away from that curved surface so you've really got to grip it down tight. Uh, you know, correct way to do this is in a vacuum bag, but it's an awkward shape. Vacuum bag would bend this veneer as it uh, collapsed down over the form, and then it's going to shatter and break. And it's just it's one of the awkward things to do. I think uh, mainly what we're seeing there now is excess glue, but. I'm just going to work a bit more on this to make sure there's no paper stuck between the joint because that will show up like a grey line on the outside. Okay, I think we're good to go here. So I've taped our extra piece of veneer on. I can fold that back to get the glue in there. And we're going to have a go at clamping this. Uh, just while I'm doing this, <laughs> I need to tell you that this is a one-shot deal um, and I know from bitter experience that there's lots to go wrong and uh, I'm hoping that I learn from previous mistakes but you can never tell can you all right so we've got our glue on fold that back up there now I'm going to use some newspaper and then this now this is a piece of flexible plastic it's about 1.6 maybe 2 millimeters thick and we're going to use that as a call so a call is just a a clamping plate that's flexible and to make matters more complicated I've got to try and look after this front veneered panel here 
So I'm going to clamp the coal on with some MDF. So the newspaper is acting like a sort of a spring uh, to compress the veneer down really tight. And our plastic core can come around like that. Uh, always takes a bit of fiddly alignment to get everything right. That's good. All right, another bit of MDF on the flat part of the side of the clock. So the important thing we're looking for here is that we've got overlap with our veneer all the way around and we've got glue squeeze out as well. And it looks okay. But we'll just have to wait and see. Surprisingly difficult to do. Now you're probably thinking, why don't you just use some sort of contact cement or a contact adhesive? And that's a perfectly valid method, I've seen that done. Uh, but it always sort of dries a little bit rubbery and, and it doesn't always pull down tight. You can get sort of voids and bubbles and difficult to clean up afterwards because it is so rubbery. So even though this is more work, I think you get a better result. Not too bad. So the joint there is very good, that'll clean up okay on the glue line, sanded off that. I'm going to trim up some of this veneer. It's still a bit wet on the back there actually. I'll get this trimmed up and then I'm going to do the other one off camera because it's essentially the same thing. Then we'll come back when it all gets trimmed up and have a look at the end result. Now you'll have to forgive me, just off camera I went ahead and uh, removed all of the clamping from the clock and I've done a bit of a preliminary clean up around here. Unfortunately it's one of those jobs where you've really got to focus on what you're doing. Uh, I needed some alone time, alright? So I cleaned all this up and there was a lot of tape and, and glue that had run down over the tape and it was proving to be a little bit difficult to get off. And, uh, like I say, you, you've really got to concentrate and what I was trying to do is sort of use the knife to just lift the excess glue off the tape. Uh, it's very, very fiddly. You can see a bit of it just here. I'm going to have the same issue. But I'm happy to report that it's come out really well. Uh, the joints where we cut the veneer and join them have uh, turned out they're almost invisible. This one here is, still needs a little bit of sanding. But the one in the middle is right there. Uh, that's where the line of symmetry in the veneer is. And you'll see that more clearly when we varnish it. But I'm just going to go ahead now and trim off this uh, excess veneer on the edge and the back. And we'll have a, a bit of a clean up and see how it looks. This is the, the really problematic area. You've got to just try and lift that glue off without damaging the, the face veneer underneath it. Alright, that's about as far as I'm willing to go with a knife. So I'm just going to do the rest by sanding. There it is, and I've done you know preliminary clean up on that veneer now, 
just soften that edge around the front, put the feet in, you get a sense of how it's going to look when it's done. Now the, the back is still a bit of a mess really. Um, I don't like seeing that exposed MDF around that edge there. And when the back panel goes on, that's not going to cover it all up. So what I've decided to do is uh, put an edge band around that exposed edge of the carcass. Now edge banding is a process of adding veneer to a narrow edge. And I've decided to run this as a separate tutorial. So I'll finish this video up here now. The next one you see will be showing you how to put a piece of veneer around an edge like that so that it follows at right angles, even around the curves. And the result looks like solid wood, but obviously it's impossible because the grain will be running at right angles no matter where we go. So that's in the next video. Um, I hope you catch up with that then. It'll be a short one. <laughs> uh, and I've got no idea what episode number I'm up to on this. I'm sort of running two concurrent projects at the moment. This one and another clock from my friend Mitch that you'll see as a separate video. So uh, I don't know, we'll just wind it up here and uh, thanks for watching.